Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie Selleck, and today we're in Madison, Indiana at the Lanier Mansion, and I'm joined by Jerry Riley. Jerry, thank you for having us. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's been a pleasure so far. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Lanier Mansion State Historic Site. Well, it's part of the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites, which includes the State Museum in Indianapolis and 11 other sites around the state. And we're one of those. So we've been owned by the state since 1925. It opened as a museum in 1926, and it's been a museum ever since. Okay. And what was the budget to put that together to push this through? Well, they, they had originally a $15,000 budget to help pay for it. You worked wonders. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, tell us a little bit about the architect, the builder that, that built this. Well, of course, it was paid for by a man named uh, James F.D. Lanier. But the architect was a man named Francis Costigan, who was from Baltimore originally. Uh, he came to Madison, and uh, this, we believe, is he had built a few smaller homes, but this was his first really major uh, commission in uh, Madison. And I think he was a very forward thinking architect. Uh, he designed the house in a Greek Revival style, which was really popular then. Uh, we know he copied uh, designs for certain elements of the house from a book by a more famous architect, a man named Menard Lefevre had published what I think of as a Greek revival for dummies, <laughs> okay. and they would copy designs out of it. But Costigan was very good at uh, adjusting those and making them his own and really making improvements. And uh, as I said, I think for the time period, he was a great architect. So he has a lot of Greek elements in the house. We have a lot of Greek columns. Uh, the doorways are shaped like Greek temple doorways. We have Greek decorations. One of the neat things uh, is the windows with the wreaths around that. Yes, yes. What, what the backstory to that, when they, what was that, a battle thing well, or Olympics? Well, they ain't both. When the oh, okay. ancient Greeks uh, would win a marathon or win some sort of contest, or if they came back from a successful battle, okay. they were often, a laurel wreath was put in their hair, and they would be in a chariot drive through a parade or whatever. So the uh, windows on the third floor that are around have laurel wreaths around each window. And that's another Greek uh, feature. Well, how about the, the man, the, the legend here, um, the man well, himself? Well, unfortunately, he's not very well known today, but he was very important in his time. His name was James F.D. Lanier, and he was born in North Carolina in 1800 exactly. So it's easy to keep track of his age. You just add the years up to the 19th century. Uh, his family moved around. They were in Kentucky for a while, then Ohio. They came to Madison in 1817. And that's just a year after Indiana became a state. So it was still kind of a rough place when he got here. Uh, he went to law school at the University of Transylvania, which is in Lexington, Kentucky. Came back here, was a lawyer for a while. But he decided he didn't really enjoy being a lawyer all that much. And uh, his big break was, in 1827, he was hired to be the clerk of the Indiana House of Representatives. And that might not sound like a big deal to us, but he had a nice little salary, which most people didn't have then. And, of course, he met a lot of important and influential people on that job. And in this little autobiography that he wrote, he says that he did them favors and they did him favors. He doesn't really explain too much about that, but I'm sure it was beneficial to him. And then in 1832, when they created the Second State Bank of Indiana, he became president of the Madison branch of the Indiana State Bank. And in that job, he did well enough to build this house. Banker money. Right. Got it. Right. Got it. Okay. And then he stayed around here for a while. Yes. He built this house in 1844. He had an earlier house on the property over here. Um, and a lot of people ask us because he only lived here until 1851. Of course, when he built the house, he didn't know what his future was going to be. Right. But he was a major investor in the first railroad in the state, which was the Madison Indianapolis Railroad. And railroads were a brand new technology. So he had good experience. And in 1849, he formed a partnership with a man in New York City named Winslow. They formed a new bank called Winslow and Lanier. And it was the first bank to really invest in railroads all across the United States. So by 1851, the business was booming and he decided to move to New York. And, and he became really wealthy after he did that. One of the neat things about the house is that uh, I think one of us had referred to the back door. And you said, there is no back door here. There's right. two fronts. That, right. Can you Let's start from there. And here we have a, a city front on the north side and a riverfront on the south side. Okay. And, and both are fronts. They're very both grand entrances. 
But the south entrance is more grand because it had to be big enough to be seen from the river by river boats going by. So it has a big columns on it. So this is so grand. Right. And the gardens came later, was that right? Cultivated yes, the by his son. son. Alexander, his oldest son, Alexander, well, he owned the home from 1861 until he died in 1895. Uh, he made a lot of modernizing changes and he also put in the formal gardens. Now, are there some interesting stories that have, have occurred here that you would know of? Well, probably one of the most interesting one people talk about, uh, and I talk about, is uh, when uh, Alexander was 16 and his younger brother John James was seven, they took a carriage ride. It was driven by a servant, and uh, according to a newspaper account we have, at some point they took the horses into the river to get a drink and the current was really strong, and the whole carriage was overturned and the servant and the younger son drowned. And the horses drowned, unfortunately, too. But Alexander survived that, but we don't know if that had any psychological effects on him or not. The father uh, deeded the house to him in 1861. Okay. And uh, he married late in life. Uh, he never had any children. And we don't, as far as we can tell, he never really had a job either. Okay. But right. he did take care of the home, made improvements. Um, supposedly, from all accounts, he was a very generous man. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I saw there's, is there a fishing pole up there? Was there's that? a fishing rod case. Oh, fishing rod case. A fly okay. fishing rod case. All right. So, so they we actually know belong to him. Right? A little bit of a sportsman then. Yes. Hunting uh -huh. and fishing kind right. of guy. Right. All right. When you're speaking up Francis Costigan and mm -hmm. how you really kind of feel like he was kind of ahead of his time, what are some of the features that he put in the home that would make you say that? Well, I think the most dramatic feature is the staircase. It is a spiral staircase. Yeah. Uh, it's a very dramatic feature, and it's also a, a space-saving feature. Uh, you know, traditional fireplace, uh, sorry, traditional um, staircases have, uh, you go up the steps and there's a landing and maybe it takes a lot more space. Yeah. Where a spiral staircase just goes right up and saves that. Uh, but it's, again, a very dramatic feature. People like that. There's also a signature that I saw at the base of the yes. staircase. What, what's up with that? Well, in the newel post of the staircase are silver medallions that have the architect's name and the date on there. And uh, so he kind of signed his work, kind of like an artist would do. My, I appreciate that. Now, some of the other features in the house. Well, uh, in the stair stairway is a curved door, and it's curved to match the curve of the wall. And so again, that would have been extra money. Uh, but again, that's a very neat feature by the architect. Um, the house has a full basement, which again, for that time period was unusual. Right. It has large closets, which for 1844 was very unusual. So he had a lot of forward thinking uh, features in the house. Now the ceilings were one thing that I just, I'm enamored with them on the first floor. Yes, on the first floor, uh, the ceilings are all plaster work. It's decorative plaster work. And some of the Greek designs that are in there are these uh, square things people see all the time. They're called dentals because they look like teeth. But a design that's called egg, the design is shaped like an egg with a dart, a little arrow next to it, which is also a Greek design. And then up the side of the staircase is the Greek key design. And that's still used a lot in decoration today. Yeah, yeah, you're right, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. One of the other magnificent features is in the, I called it the music room. What did you call it? Well, there are two parlors. Parlor. The house has yes. a, a north and a south parlor, which can be divided by pocket doors. They close, and you could have like a little tea party, open them up, have a big party. If you were going to have a wedding or a funeral, you'd have them in these rooms, and that's where the term funeral parlor oh. comes from because they used to be held in the parlor. So we have some musical instruments in there. We have a piano forte, which is really just a smaller piano. And we have a harp that uh, is one of the oldest antiques in the home. It was made in France in the 1790s. Um, Mr. Lanier's grandson donated that to the building when it became a museum in 1925. And we found out through research the man who made that harp had made harps for Marie Antoinette as well. Now that's history for right. you. Right. <laughs> that's great. Uh, what about you? What are some of the things that you, I mean, you're very fortunate. You get to be here a right, lot. But what, right. what still kind of just brightens your eyes? Well, one thing I notice, and I think, because I give tours sometimes and, yeah. and so on, um, you know, the house is a nice grand home, and it was probably the grandest home in Indiana when it was built in 1844. But by our standards today, when you think of a mansion, it really isn't that large. It's not a huge house. But almost all visitors are very impressed when they come through here. And I think it's because the architect, 
very skillfully has made it very grand and it just has a very grand feel even though it's really not that large but people go away and say boy that house and I don't know how many times people go through here and say well you know I've also been to the Biltmore well size wise this is nowhere near the Biltmore right but somehow they're making that connection in their mind somehow it's grand enough that it makes them it reminds them of the Biltmore so it's an interesting I think the architect is a great architect Jerry, are there some uh, of the original pieces that belong to the Lanier family that are actually in here still? Well, I have to say that all the furniture in here is antique from his period. We have very few reproductions, almost all of it is antique, but we only have a few pieces that he himself owned. And when people take the tour, we point them out. One is the bookcase in the library, uh, a desk that he had upstairs in his office, and the fishing rod case, which we talked about, little things like that. We don't have a lot. I wish we had more, but we don't. But there, the, the furniture and antiques that we do have are very nice and very appropriate for the time period, and people usually are very impressed with that. Also, I should mention the paint colors in the house are the original paint colors. And we did a paint analysis to figure that out and made sure that they do match. So both inside and out, these are the original paint colors. One of the interesting things that I thought was really cool with the paint is that it it seems reflective. When, now, yes. why did they, there, there was a reason for that, right? Right. They would often put a varnish over their paint, which gives it a very glossy look. And that's because back then, you know, they had candles or at the most gas and the light, light sources were not very bright. So by having a shiny wall, it reflects the light around more. And they were always trying to do that. That's why homes like this have a lot of mirrors. A lot of prisms are hanging from things. It's all to reflect light around because again, they didn't have electric lights. So they needed that. Impressive. Right. Now, do you have weddings and that kind of stuff here? We can't have them in the house. Okay. But we have them on the grounds. All and right. you could rent areas on the property. Uh, there are different prices for different areas. And uh, people do that. Sometimes people have just private parties. Uh, some corporations have sometimes rented the grounds. They usually bring a tent and put things up. And, nice. Uh, and yeah. No. Well, what else? Are there events? Well, there we have tours? programs throughout the year. Um, we have like an Easter egg hunt for children on the lawn. We have uh, concerts in the summertime. We have four concerts. Uh, they're on the North Lawn. People sit there and the bands play. And uh, it's just yeah. a beautiful evening. You know, in the summertime, people bring their picnic baskets. And sometimes people get fancy and bring little tables with candle opera on them. They get go over the top a little bit. <laughs> and then they listen to the music. But you can see the house and you can see the Ohio River. It's a very relaxing evening. Very nice. Um, we have ghost walks that we do of the home. We do behind the scenes tours, which we go into the basement and other places. We don't go on a normal tour. Those are once the behind the scenes tours are the second Saturday of each month, the four o'clock tour. That one might be worth coming into. Right, exactly. Yeah. Pay a little more, but you get a lot more interesting things. I would say so. And uh, then we have, we're part of the town's candlelight tour of homes which every Christmas we're on that. And uh, this past year we had like uh, about uh, over 2,000 people go through the house in four nights, um, decorate for 1850 Christmas. Um, just a lot of different activities throughout the year. Thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie and today we're in Madison, Indiana at the Lanier Mansion State Historic Site. Jerry, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming. And remember, Travel, Travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now.